Could the Vastatosaurus rex, more commonly known as the V-Rex, survive the Mesozoic? This massive inbred descendant of Tyrannosaurus is famous for going up against King Kong in Peter Jackson's 2005 film, failing to kill the title character, but contributing to the extinction of all the other Kongs. We'll be placing 100 adult V-Rexes into the Winkle formation of Cretaceous Argentina, where its rivals won't be apes, but other giant theropods. First, let's cover the basics about our grumpy reptilian friend. The Vistatosaurus rex, or Ravager Lizard King, is supposed to be a descendant of Tyrannosaurus rex that became isolated on Skull Island and survived the KPG extinction 66 million years ago. Notable atopomorphies that separate it from its ancestor include greater size at up to 50 feet or 15 meters long, a heavily reinforced skull, armored skin tough enough to ignore bullets, a reduced rib count to increase flexibility, three fingers instead of two, weaker senses, and extraordinary physical durability far beyond any other predator in its size class. V-Rexes are able to survive falls that would be fatal to other animals its own mass, and the running speed of 25 miles an hour or 40 kilometers an hour only adds to their deadly cocktail. While proportionally slightly less robust than T-Rex, their overall much longer body weighs around 15 tons when fully grown. Their bite remained strong enough to shatter bone, and subadults frequently went toe to toe with adult Megaprimatus Kongs in an effort to expand their territories. Ultimately, the combination of predation pressure from the V Rexes, low birth rate, and disease drove the Kongs extinct, with the exception of King Kong himself, who was so exceptional among his own kind that he could fight off three V Rexes simultaneously. Am I mad that a gorilla beat three Tyrannosaurs? No, not at all. I'm not coping. Ah, uh, reptilian supremacy! Anyway, let's take a look at the first of the V-Rex's obstacles, its new home, the Winkle Formation. This late Cretaceous arid desert is quite a bit more dry and desolate than the tropical skull island that the V-Rexes are used to. Many sources of water are ephemeral, meaning that they appear and disappear according to seasonal rainfall. This means that constant traveling is necessary for large animals to find bodies of water big enough to sustain them. But some studies do report cycads, conifers, crocodiles, and turtles, meaning that there were also enough supplies of year-round water for plenty of plants and large aquatic animals. It was also warm, meaning that the tropics-loving V-Rex won't have to deal with winters. V-Rex on Skull Island engaged in ontogenetic niche partitioning, with the young and sub-adults preferring the jungle while the adults hunted large-bodied prey in open flatlands. The more open and desertified Winkle Formation wouldn't provide a sheltered nursery area for the V-Rex young, forcing juveniles to spread out across further distances to avoid the highly territorial adults. Until they reached that point, any new generations of V-Rexes would likely experience higher casualties than normal from territory-based battles. The stronger, established adults would kick the juveniles out of the area, spreading the deadly influx of massive super predators even further. The V-Rex gets a 6 out of 10 for its home score, while the warm weather is familiar, lacking the forests and jungles that its juveniles relied on so heavily would definitely slow the growth of the population thanks to their raw, intraspecific aggression. Furthermore, I don't really see- The arrogance of your kind betrays you. We see your creations, your attempts to struggle in the vain web of life, to control the very powers of nature and bend them to your naive will. We have been watching little humans, just as we watch every world. You believe yourselves ready to experience true power, but first, you must face the trials. The skull, the madman, the eye. How will your champions fare? Look at hunger. Back on Skull Island, the Ravager Lizard Kings often fed on young Mega Primatus Kong and the derived Hadrosaur Lycocrystis, with the sauropod Brontosaurus and Ceratopsian Veracutus appearing on the menu on occasion. The latter two were certainly more dangerous prey thanks to their extreme size and armaments. While the Winkle Formation didn't support any Ceratopsians that we know of, it was stuffed to the gills with sauropods that would seem familiar to the visiting Vastatosaurus. We've got the Rabacosaurid Cytosaura, at up to 20 meters long, Lemaesaurus, a close relative at 15 meters, Jucatosaurus, a medium-sized Titanosaur, Choconsaurus, a slightly smaller Titanosaur that's still the size of a giant elephant, the enormous Busting Gory Titan, and the even more enormous Argentinosaurus, which is known from a couple of specimens in the 80 to 90 ton range. V-Rex would be drooling at the veritable buffet of perfectly sized prey items. Rather than having to stalk the young of Brontosaurus Baxteri, a colossal sauropod that reached over 100 tons at full size, it could now take down sauropods that were its own body mass. Cytosaura and Lumasaurus would be ideal. Sauropods typically rely on their sheer size and are less heavily armored than some other herbivorous dinosaurs, so a theropod nearly triple the size of anything they'd previously encountered would throw them for a loop. 
The bigger titanosaurs, like busting gory titan and argentinosaurus, would need to be careful but are close enough to the sizes of the Skull Island brontosaurus that they'd likely be safe as adults. It's important to remember that V-Rex's hunting in packs is an exception to the rule, and they usually hunt alone, limiting the size of prey animals they'd risk attacking. If they didn't typically use pack behavior to hunt the titanic brontosaurus Baxteri, there's no real reason to think they'd spawn the ability to hunt slightly smaller sauropods like Argentinosaurus. They would, however, need to adapt to the suddenly open terrain of Argentina. They were used to ambushes, using their dark coloring to blend in with the jungle and then attack, but that's not a viable option here. Pursuit predation would be the way to go, using their abnormally high speed to run down medium-sized sauropods and bring them down in a brutal confrontation. V-Rex earns a 10 out of 10 for hunger. The prey items here are in the perfect size class, and pound for pound are much more lightly defended than what V-Rex hunted back home. Chef's kiss. Hanger is the final obstacle, the threats posed by native predators and competitors. I think this might be a controversial take, but Vestatosaurus would not have any natural predators in the Winkle Formation. There is nothing that ever lived on land that would choose a 15-ton bulletproof theropod as its main food source. And while the Winkle is full of Carcrodontosaurus super predators, even the biggest are half of V-Rex's mass. Let's take a look at the roster. We have Gualicho, a bear-sized theropod of uncertain affinities. The mid-sized abelosaurid Ilocalesia wouldn't have threatened V-Rex, apart from picking off the occasional lone hatchling. The noosaurid Winklesaurus is even smaller. Oviraptor is basically popcorn, but Scorpiovenator, at the size of a large polar bear, could have threatened very young juveniles. Tarovenator, or Bull Hunter, was an elephant-sized Carcrodontosaurid that would have directly competed with juvenile V-Rex for medium sauropod prey. Meraxes was the biggest native predator, with one specimen slightly larger than Tarovenator and another as big as the Giganotosaurus holotype. That puts Meraxes' max size at between 8 and 9 tons, making it much more threatening than its other Argentinian brethren. But that's still small fry compared to a V-Rex adult. Mapusaurus' top size wasn't quite that of Meraxes, but this megatheropod likely hunted in packs, which would give it much more of an advantage in confrontations with the loner Vastatosaurus. The dynamic would likely play out like how we see grizzly bears interacting with wolves in Yellowstone today, with some give and take on both sides. If, of course, if it weren't for the V-Rex's ridiculously strong bones and armor. Given the punishment a single V-Rex can take before being injured, much less dying, it's more likely that they'd be able to bully an arbitrary number of native theropods out of their kills. They're faster, they're much bigger, and they're unreasonably strong. They're movie monsters, after all. Vastatosaurus earns a 9 out of 10 for Hanger. Not a perfect score, given the sheer density of large theropod competitors that might be able to target young V-Rexes, but pretty close. It would become the apex predator of the Winkle by an overwhelming margin, and its final Thrive Rate and Alive score is a very solid 8.3 out of 10. The V-Rex's weakest category was home, given how the open desert would severely limit its tendencies to act as an ambush predator, but it performed so well in both hunger and hangar that it ended up with an excellent score anyway. A 15-ton theropod with bulletproof armor is, well, pretty difficult for nearly any ecosystem to deal with. Thanks for watching! I hope you enjoyed the video and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this scenario in the comments. I have so many similar projects lined up in the future and can't wait to share them with you. Keep an eye out for... What the, the heck? Hey, hey, Bree, do you hear that? It's coming from above the apartment. Sounds like a freaky plane or something. I'll grab the cats if you grab the magic cards. We we might need to head to the bomb shelter or grandma's house or something. I just, whoa, hey, what are you doing in my house? Bree, we need to go now. The stone champion has been collected. Prepare the other extraction teams. The trials will begin soon. I got out of my cell for a couple minutes. Anyway, I have to tell Madeline over us here. They're next on their list. Monsters, real monsters. Sea, stone, and sky. Something like that. We each have to. Can you speak from his cell? Mobilize all troops. Ah, oh, heck. Send.